round one. They certainly are, Dave. A test in track, but let's get straight into it as we head to the start line for the first qualifier of the day. Yeah, onto the line we go, and it's a very interesting car. It is Diogo Correa from Portugal in this incredible car. This is running a Mercedes compressor engine, which <laughs> I've, you know, it comes in normally in the Mercedes SLK. That's right. This yeah. one is now running 1,100 newton meters of torque, which is incredible. Diogo, not a, a man of few words. He, he doesn't speak a whole lot of English, but everything, yeah, everything was smiles. Everything looked good in practice yesterday, and he's ready to come here and party. He is the first driver to go through the course. We'll talk you through that course as he goes. He's now slamming through those gears: first gear, second gear, third gear, fourth. Massive speed on that first corner and trying to stay as wide as possible here to give himself the best arc down the hill. Nice job on the second outer zone as he's coming through here very tight on the inside clip and now it's about decel. You can see him on the handbrake trying to scrub that speed just stay within the track limits into this first very tight corner onto the inner zone. Now this is a section where you've got to be very technical on the throttle. You can't put too much throttle down or you'll lose too much momentum. Keep the car moving. Transition again and now another big pull as they come out of that corner. Smoking out our cameras and heading towards that last section. And now it's this tight transition towards that last corner. Put the foot to the floor. A little wave to the fans at the grandstand. A nice first run to kick off qualifying. These boys came to play today, Ian. They certainly did, Dave. Yeah, Diego Correa there putting down an incredible uh, first show. Shows his hand there in first qualifying run. The Portuguese driver not messing around. And just goes to show you how long that first corner is. Demands a lot of concentration. And getting that initiation correct. Not slowing the car too much on the handbrake has been absolutely critical. Our judge is saying earlier on that getting the initiation right and getting that line dialed absolutely perfect will set them up. If we go to go to our slow-mo camera out there on the Phantom, Dave, look at that. What an incredible shot. Yeah, you can see just the back of the car compressed with the amount of grip these guys have dialed into the car. A lot of soft suspension settings being used here in Austria. And there you have it. He's the first man to put a score on the board. It's a 72 for Diogo Correa from Portugal. Puts him in the first for the moment, but there is a lot of drivers still to come. Remember, each of these drivers will get two non-consecutive runs with their highest score, counting as their overall score for qualifying. We're going to lose a lot of the grid here in qualifying, Ian, so there is no messing around. There's no messing around, Dave. And this first round, everyone's been hungry for it. And there we now, go. Here's an interesting one. Interesting. Max Conn, debut, 16 years of age, from the UK. Made a lot of uh, impressions there, but he's up to the big leagues now for the first time ever. Goes up against Diogo Correa. We talked about him. Another rising driver from Portugal. Got that Mercedes engine. He's got double the horsepower of Max Cotton here, but a very unconventional setup. This one right down to the wire. Look at Max Conn. Look at the concentration in those young eyes as he comes off the star line and through the gears. He is the higher qualifier. Goes into the first corner, but Diego Correa not back at them. Oh. Understeer. Correa's got under steer. He's going to go off the track here, I think. Just about stays on it. Had to back out. We got, got a little too close in that first corner. Correa now playing the catch-up game. He's still in this battle. And look at that, Max Cotton. Super tidy on the end of that first corner. Yeah, certainly. Really. Oh, and straight. Oh, Cotton's oh. got a problem. Cotton shuts it. Cotton oh, is a Cotton's problem. Got a problem. Now. Let's go back to that first corner. Does Diego Correa drop two wheels? Yeah, I mean... Now, Khan's definitely got an issue there. Look, he's trying to drift here. And the car is drifting. So what happened there? I'm going to say that's a gear shift. We, I mean, we got on board, Dave. We, we do have an on board. So we do we'll have exactly an see what was up. Something happened. Diego Correa, did he put two wheels off on the first corner? I'm going to go out there and say it was two wheels off from Correa on the first corner. Which would make it a zero. A zero. Or a, as we said, incomplete. Yep. Then Max Cotton has it incomplete. Yep. Because he's straightened up. Does so that mean zero, that was all? Zero, zero. Zero, zero. Now let's have a look. We're inside the car of Max Cotton. Now obviously, with it being so sunny today, it is quite shaded in the car. But as he comes down the hill, we're not so concerned here. He's driving along. Everything seems to be going great. He's saying, I'm 16 years of age. I'm driving a 500 horsepower V8 car. Living my best life. But here, when he comes out of this second hairpin, so not here, just around about when he transitions back here, what happens? Oh, he goes to the gear, goes back on the handbrake. He's back on the gear. It's a gear change issue. He can't get the car into third gear, ah. it looks like. Can't get the car into third gear. So then he goes back into third, and it goes. And then he goes again, So it's yeah. a gear shift. And I watch Correa here. He Correa. understeers. One wheel. Oh, it oh. might just be one wheel. It might just be one wheel. Now, was he straightening at that point? He was understeering. He was understeering in one wheel, but that's, been, uh, that's totally down to the judges. They've had an easy road so far in the top 32. <laughs> yeah. Now gonna, it's time I'm to gonna, go to work. I'm going to leave this one to them. It doesn't matter. They won't have to decide this till the end of the two runs anyway. So now, will Max Cotton be able to get that car into gear? Correa, he is there with the lead position, so he won't have that issue on the first corner. I think he might be in a strong position here, depending on how the judges go. Correa's got the pace, too. Look at that, leaving Cotton for dead on the run-up. Correa's car is so fast, Steve. Look at that, down the hill. Cotton has no answer there. 
Yeah, Correa's car absolutely up and gone as Max Cotton struggles to find proximity. But here he comes. Oh, on the heat of the moment. Getting all too much for Max Cotton as he throws it off track. I think that's decided. I think that was definitely another two wheels and a straight off for Max Cotton. And it's spun it here, half spun it into that corner. Just about hold on to Yeah, it. I think it's fun. Mark Correa just has to get across this finish line without making any errors. And you know what? I have to say it from watching him briefly last year. I think Diogo Correa has come a long way in his skill and ability. And I think it's a deserved win for him here. He has. Yeah, so I think Max Cotton. Cotton knows that his weekend may be over. He's handed out the window, he's waving to the Austrian fans. Um, let's see what happened at the end of the, the first run here. So much speed from Korea down the hill. That car is just, he's really dialed it in, and from when we've seen him in Riga to now, he has just been practicing and practicing and practicing, because he's a complete different driver. Look at this from Cotton. I think Cotton forgets where the end of the corner is. Yeah. I think he's concentrating so much on on Diogo, Correa, yeah. that he, he's just looking at the car in front, and the car in front goes sharp left, he yeah. goes straight. Um, but look, it's not going to happen all at once for the youngster Max Cotton. Max Cotton is going to take some experience. It's going to take some time. He's had a good taster of it. And the best thing is he gets to try it again tomorrow. So whatever these guys you see making mistakes, they have all night to think about. And it. usually <laughs> you got to wait four weeks of, you know, sitting by yourself going, why did I make such a mistake? But now they can just wipe it clear tomorrow and go again. So Correa's car, though, I still can't believe has a Mercedes SLK compressor. Uh, engine in that car running 1100 newton meters of torque that is outrageously <laughs> crazy well, both drivers have a quick word with each other and i think this one's going to be another obvious decision for the judges and it is correa from portugal going into the top 16. if i'm not mistaken the highest uh, achievement of a portuguese driver to date in drift masters yes so into is, the top yeah. 16. two a86s and a portuguese driver into the top 16. we said it would be an unpredictable season and here we are. And here we are. And Max Scott, he's happy. He's, he's enjoying the experience. He get back into the pits, have a word with his dad, get himself. Uh, he's still smiling. He knows he can come back out tomorrow and, yeah, and look, try and rectify those mistakes. He's getting a lot of experience in one weekend. Yeah, he's having a lot of fun. Look, he's it's a new experience for him. He's enjoying himself. He's having some fun, and uh, you know what? He's learning, Dave. He's learning. It might be a tough lesson sometimes, yeah. but he's definitely learning. Well, when you're 16, you're like a sponge. Everything you're learning things so fast. And this experience alone, and we saw with Conor Shanahan, you know, going to Europe and, you know, the Diogo state. Correa, well, what a name he would make for himself if he could take down Shanahan here. Yeah, Diogo, at the moment, nothing to lose, lose Dave. He's, he's come into this competition last season, showed his hand, came back for the complete season this year, and uh, right now stacks himself up against some of the best of the best. And Diogo Correa, really, to me, been driving on form all weekend, making a few silly mistakes here, there, and but nevertheless, he is fast. He has got a very capable car, and they're off the line, ready to rock and roll. Shanahan to lead them in. As Diogo Correa looks for the back end of the 86, not a lot of separation in it. As Diogo Correa looks down, down the side for the 86, they both come absolutely flying through that front clipping point. Diogo Correa gives Shanahan the room to maneuver. That was the wrong move. That opened the door for Shanahan to start to pull away. As Shanahan transitions now into the second hairpin. Diogo Correa shortcuts the circuit, looking for another opportunity to jump up into the door. Shanahan firing some smoke up into the face of the Portuguese driver. Diogo Correa is going to make a big dive on this next part of the circuit, and certainly does, but can't pull it off as he finds himself in the middle of the track. Threw everything at that, Diogo, and do you know what? He's still in the fight. Yeah. Definitely put a score on the board, but hard to match that consistency from Shanahan. He went very aggressive from the off. Look right in on the back bumper of Shanahan's car. You know, dials out a bit of the angle to build up the speed. But just as you said, as he came to outer zone three, just made the wrong decision. Could have stayed wide here, went shallow, and he had to stay on the handbrake and lock up. And that allowed Shanahan to take the wider line, which is actually the more, I suppose, natural racing line through there. So he picked up so much more speed coming out of that first hairpin that, you know, then Correa's cutting the track. He's trying to catch up a little bit. Doesn't do a bad job. Maybe runs the wheel here and there off the track. But he's still in the fight. It's not a, not a walkover by any means. And Correa now has an opportunity in the lead position to, you know, put on the smoke show, try and hopefully force an error from Shanahan, uh, which is generally unlikely. But at the same time, anything can happen. As Shanahan was saying uh, in the pits to us earlier on, his car is right on the edge of working. It's running so hot. Wow. He says running very hot. He said the tires are really, really hot. And uh, yeah, you never know. Yeah, you um, never yeah, know. Yeah, look, look at, at the this. crowd. Yeah. I'm hot, Dave. <laughs> that that lady else. is fanning herself, and she's not in a three-layer race suit with a balaclava and a helmet exactly. inside a car that's exactly. about 150 degrees. She doesn't degrees. know about heat at the moment. No. <laughs> 
she is relatively cold <laughs> compared to Jack Shannon and, and Diego, Diogo Correa now in their cars. So it is a war of attrition here to try and stay, you know, stay concentration levels, keep yourself, uh, you know, as motivated as possible. Shannon coming for it here. Looks like he's going very aggressive off the start line. Yeah, Diogo Correa smoking the tyre straight away, and Jack Shanahan gets lost in a cloud of smoke because Correa throws up the smoke screen. Absolutely incredible show. Shanahan positions his car on the inside of the circuit so he can see the door of that BMW E92. As Shanahan plays with danger, dancing down the side of that BMW of the Portuguese driver now. They look for the transition. Shanahan perfectly timed as he looks to make another dive. Correa goes wide, opens the door even more for Shanahan to get up close and personal. And Diego Correa right now making all the wrong moves, giving away precious parts of the circuit and the door to Shanahan as he transitions once again. Shanahan looks for the dive. Works the 86 up onto the side of the BMW. Yeah, excellent run from Shanahan. And as you said, Correa actually made it easier for Shanahan, running wide, letting him back into the battle. You know, from through the first corner, I am convinced that Jack Shanahan did not could not see where he <laughs> was going. I just, I'd love this angle here because watch Correa's rear wheels and watch where Shanahan is here. How is he seeing there? What's going on whatsoever? I think he's just keeping the foot to the floor and driving through it. Towards the end of the corner, though, he's still there. You can see Shannon just running a little bit up onto the curbs, a little bit less angle just to make himself as fast as possible. And then this is where, you know, Correa starts missing some zones. But I think this is the real moment. When he transitions back, look how wide Correa goes, washes off, and Shannon's like, I've got you now. I'm on a shorter inside line. Line, and from there on in, he's really able to push the issue, get up onto the door, be as close as possible. And proximity on this track is very difficult, it's very challenging, and when you get it, you're really rewarded by the judges. Yeah, you certainly are. And it's a big lump of rubber, Dave, just stuck on the GoPro of the uh, camera there, as you can see. Look at, the, look at the drone in the background, caught in the phantom shot. Look at that, incredible. It's amazing we can see these shots nowadays. Just, where, you know, just years magic. ago this would have been, you'd be, uh, you know, your imagination couldn't imagine that you'd have telemetry and drones and onboard see everything. But here we are. Our imagination could believe that Jack Shanahan would go through to the top eight and Diogo Correa. You know what? A solid showing from him. I think he's going to come back tomorrow for round two even stronger. He's yeah. now got a belief. He definitely looked like he wasn't a fish out, or he was a fish out of wasn't a fish out of water rather. <laughs> um, there's no, there's no fish around here because it's there's too no hot. Fish. All the lakes Miles have evaporated at this stage. Uh, just... So Diogo Correa did a very, very good uh, job of staying in the fight. Yeah, but, he did. You know, he he's did. got a lot less experience than Shanahan, and he's still working out some gremlins in his car. And no, it's only we've only begun to see uh, his career flourish. So Shanahan moves to this top. I've been down there. You've been down there talking to these fans. They have been waiting so long. So, yeah. Two years. Two years for this event to come back here, and they are so excited. You guys were saying to me, I bought my ticket for this event, you know, in 2019, and I had it, they kept it. And now here they are two years later, finally getting to come see these guys in action, having an amazing time. But well, we sold the show out yesterday. I mean, it looks like it's going to get sold out again today as we move yeah. through competition. Diego Correa now sits on the line. Diego is driver. a wild driver. But I, I'll give you a piece of advice here. I watched his practice runs this morning, and he was flying. I think it's probably the best I've seen him drive. Yes. So we've got a couple of runs in. Can he replicate that? It seems like he's getting stronger and stronger every run. I think it's going to be a good run. Well, Diogo Correa fires in. And this car, as they said, looking stronger and stronger. And Correa looking absolutely dialed at the moment. Looks like another driver who's gone for the speed element this time as Diogo Correa holds on to it. Down the back end of the circuit, just drops a wheel off track. And it looked so promising up until that point. It looked like he was on an absolute flyer of a run. Does pick up those clipping points, drops that front one, navigates his way around, through, up onto the outside zone six. And now down he comes as Diogo Correa sets himself up nicely for that final out zone across the line. Good run, I think it's just that that little bit of a dirt drop just cost him yeah. everything. And again, it's the hardest part of the track. You gotta thread the needle, you gotta come in so fast. But you've got like look at this, he's so fast through that first corner smoke pouring off the back end of the car a little bit of a hammer right there to adjust and watch how fast he takes this up onto the edge of the concrete now this is where it goes wrong Can't just i mean i'm talking five yeah. inches from being yeah. perfect there and having a perfect run but that's how on edge this track is that bit of concrete there is not even so you're kind of just hoping you kind of ride it get the through right the zone bit, yeah. and um takes no prisoners but still scores a 77 putting him into fifth place with that dirt drop goes to show the potential that run could have had we go. Nice slow mo from our Phantom down the back end of the circuit there, and it's Diogo Correa. Yeah, makes his way around. two zeros. We can see a battle. We know uh, Diogo Correa, unfortunately, has got a lot of pace, a lot of speed. It's going to be a very interesting battle. Two BMW E92 smash through the gears and down the track. Big initiation. 
from Viscotti as Viscotti in the lead position. Correa, who's got a very fast car, looking like he can't catch up at the moment. Dives down, he's got a shortcut, dropping wheels on the dangerous part of circuit. Oh, look at Correa making a dive on the inside, but now he's going to shortcut the track. Big, straight and big mistake from Diego Correa at the moment. Now as Kevin Viscotti looks good in the lead, fulfilling all of those clipping boxes at the moment. Diego Correa, though, not letting him get away, not letting Viscotti escape. He knows once he gets out of reach, it could be the battle done and done. But Kevin Piscotti absolutely flying, fulfilling all of those outside zones. Perfect lead line from Kevin Piscotti. I think uh, Correa getting a little lost in the smoke towards that last two outer zones. Transitioned very early, had to come back on the hammer. He got kind of stuck in the middle. And uh, judges will be watching that in the chase position, saying, yeah, you had a bit of proximity, but it was in the wrong area. Other than that, mistakes on both sides. A couple of errors here and there, Ian. I mean, it wasn't perfect, but you know what? I'm impressed with the run overall. Correa, though, has a big hit on that. That inside curve, I think, is, is really, really tough to get out of again. You can see it messes Correa up there. He has to go really, really slow into the corner. Scolti looking very good in that lead position, carrying on his form from qualifying. Very wide here, though, probably a little too wide, but that being so wide there actually only makes it easier for, uh, for the chase car, but a late transition. And Diogo now, watch this, he transitions far too early. Look way over in the inside, and he has to kind of stop, start, stop, start to avoid not finishing the run before the lead car. So, you know, a couple of errors on both sides. I'm not going to call that one. I think that's one that the judges have a, a little bit of ink being thrown down on paper <laughs> at the moment of, uh, of trying to match the errors. And let's see what happens on the second run. Maybe a little advantage to Piscolti, I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm inclined to agree with you there, Dave. The lead car normally hard to take an advantage in a twin battle, but I think Piscotti there doing a good job, and Diego Correa, not sure whether he was having a word of his spotters by the wall there, or just checking his car out. He does pull back to the start line, no five minute rules, just a two minute clock to get back to the start line. And Kevin Piscotti puts his thumb up, says, you ready, buddy? Let's go again. <laughs> so there we go, Hungary versus Portugal on the line. They both get their thumbs up. Both anxious to get off the start line, yeah. you can see it edging forward. Biscotti, yeah. <laughs> he's been scolded, he's, pushed he's back come, a little come bit. Come on, come on, <laughs> he's eager. He's very eager. And the lights go green off, like, look at the acceleration of the car taking off. Just incredible, look at the way he shifts through the gears, full gear, big flick left to right, Diego Correa fires down, throws that car into it. Piscotti not as close as what Diego Correa was in that chase position, giving him some room, but he carries the pace and the speed into the circuit, down the back end, oh, Piscotti goes wide. Fires dirt up in the air now. He's jumping across the curb. Piscotti looks like he's falling apart right now. Diego Correa looking really strong out front. Kevin Piscotti needs to hold himself together. Wheels on the inside of the curb once again from Kevin Piscotti. Diego Correa keeps his cool, jumps onto the outside zone, and Kevin Piscotti shortcuts the outside zone to try and gain some proximity. Yeah, kind of swung back the other way there very, very quickly because simply, from my perspective anyway, Piscotti just making big errors. A lot of big errors, Dave. And, uh, you know, for me, Piscotti looks like the spot said to him, that you've got a really good lead in the bag. Uh, Diego Correa was making a few mistakes. Just could hold your own, keep you cool. But unfortunately for me, Kevin Piscotti, too many errors. Too many errors, made lots of mistakes. And Diego Correa switched things up, and now he looked like the stronger contender. Very nice lead. Look at this, two wheels off the track. Is that even three or four wheels oh, off track down the back end? took down the drone. That's how high he fired a piece of mud there. It just flew by the drone. I was like, he really was deep if he's kind of tearing it up that much. <laughs> and he finds it tough to get back from there. He finds look at it. that, wheels on the inside as well, Dave. Not not a good look for Kevin Piscotti at the moment. Leading a lot of points there. And you know what, he had such an advantage from, well, not such an advantage, but maybe a, a slight advantage from the first one. I think all that work might have been undone there. Let's see what the judges say. Oh, there we go. One vote for Diego Correa. Diego Correa gets the win, advances through two. Let's be happy with that decision, Dave. He will into the top 16 and well deserved. Held his nerve, held his cool. And he heads back to the pit area to get some fresh rubber and some fresh fuel into that Mercedes powered BMW. And uh, yeah. Diego Correa. And Diego Correa, well, he's been getting stronger and stronger every single run of the track, Dave. Well, from Correa's point of view here, he's nothing to lose. You beat Jack Shannon, everybody in European drifting is talking about you. You lose. You know what, you're, you're the underdog going in anyway. You're still so here. So why not throw everything at it? Shannon has something to lose here. He's expected as the more successful driver, as the more accomplished driver, to win this battle. But anything can happen in the next two minutes. Here we go. Shanahan in the lead. He's so... Can Carrier keep with him?
Yes, he can. Corey is right with him as they come down. He's making a big dive down here. Will he actually be able to make it happen? A little bit of understeer from Corrier in the chase position. He's on the wrong line now, but he might be able to just make it work into this corner. He's still in this battle. He certainly is still in the battle, Dave. The proximity sensor not even a lit, though. It just goes to show you how far away Diego Correa is from the side of Jack Shanahan's GT86. He emerges through the smoke to put wheels up on the inside of the curb as they come firing down into outside zone seven. And Diego Correa makes a last dive. He shortcuts the circuit, looks for the door, just about avoids contact with a back bumper. Very talented driver, Diogo Correa, the pride of Portugal. I'm going to have to just interject, though, and ask, did he drop two wheels on the inside of the curb? Because I'm not trying to rain on anyone's <laughs> parade, and certainly we've had no rain here today or yesterday. It's been pretty scorching hot, but I've got to look at that again. It looks like he was trying everything he could do to catch up. He catches a little understeer coming down the hill. Watch this, as he comes through here, he has to straighten those front wheels a little bit just to stop the car going off the track. Puts him on the wrong line, but he manages to make it work. He works the car. He massages it through this section of the course. But as he transitions back, he knows Shanahan's got to jump on him. He knows he's moving very far ahead. Now watch this from Correa. He cuts the corner. Or oh, maybe just keeps one wheel on the curb. I think it's, it's, one, yeah. it's definitely going to be a deduction from the judges. He was trying everything. He had to try and get back into the battle. He had to put the exclamation mark on it. He had to get up onto the rear quarter panel of Jack Shannon's car as they came across the line. And he did just that. He's definitely still in this battle. And anything can happen from here. Bonnet open, though, on Correa's car. Looks like they're just spray, spraying it's some like water in. Yeah, they're cooling the they're car cooling down, the car down. So obviously not enough air when the car stops at the end of a run. You think about a race car, they, they have a cool down lap. They keep going around and around and so much airflow is coming up through the car. But when you have a drift bell, you've got the car at full temperature and then all of a sudden you just dead stop. So that engine is roasting hot. So as you can see, these drivers being allowed just to throw a little bit of water on the radiator, just to cool the car down, bring the temperatures down because the ECUs in these cars, if they get too hot, Guess what? They're going to cut the car out anyway. So they want to make sure that they're back to a regular temperature before they leave the line. And that's a little bit of courtesy from the marshals here in the Drift Masters European Championship. They're the guys that keep this on the road. And Marcin, our uh, Starline Marshal, he's just, he's just a hero. He's a legend. He cares more about the drivers than his own safety most of the time. You can see him checking all those panels, making sure everybody's OK. He said it's been a long old two days, but he's going to be with these guys till the end. Well, there we go. Here we go. Shanahan now in the chase position. You can see him pulling gear and go off the start line. Watch the gear change on the sequential gearbox. Third gear, fourth gear, and a flick in and right on the back bumper of Diogo Correa. Look how close Shanahan is here. He's in the smoke screen, though. He's going to have to try and get on the inside to see a little bit, but he's coming in very fast. Correa. Oh, and Shanahan hits the barrel. He's hit a barrel. Has it caused damage to Shanahan's car? He's now dropping back a little bit. Hopefully, that car is still OK. He's broken a wheel there earlier yesterday. Is there going to be a same issue here again? Correa looking pretty strong. Shannon not being able to catch up to him. Is there an issue with Shannon's car? Is he holding back a little bit here? I'm not too sure that car is 100%. I think Shannon driving a little bit wounded here, but he's still staying in the fight. As they transition back, Shannon does make a big dive into that last corner and does get the proximity across the line. Drama from the off there, Ian. Looked to me like Shanahan dropped a little bit too close, hit that barrel, it definitely affected the car. It certainly did, David. Let's take a look back at the replay of this one. I want to see why Jack Shanahan dropped back through that section of the circuit. He was all over the back bumper. And we're going to see this from Jack Shanahan's POV view as he comes down. You can see, look, misjudges that corner, drops a wheel on the inside, and that upsets him. You can see the steering wheel in his hand. He turns it back. Yeah, that must have affected him somehow. Diego Correa, though, from this point out, starts to drive away. Look at that, throw smoke in the face of Shanahan. Shanahan still, you know, closer than what it looks like on the cameras from the outside. But look at this. You can see Correa pulling away, pulling away. And he has to make a real bad dive. Down shifts a gear to try and catch Correa up as he shortcuts the circuit. Makes a dive up onto the inside. There's Jack Shanahan and on the door across the line. Yeah, so not looking as comfortable as it would seem on paper. Jack Shanahan hit the podium yesterday. Some incredible battles. But take nothing away from Diogo Correa, who put on one hell of a fight there. I think Shanahan might just still have done enough. Let's see what the judges think. And that is the way they've swung. Jack Shanahan goes through to our top eight, joining his brother in the top eight, but not an easy passage to the top eight. He would have looked at that on paper, not known too much about Correa, said, let's uh, have a look at things.